Season's greetings. Here we've got a square. Suppose we know that the diagonal of this square has length square root of two. By the way, the diagonals of a square are congruent. So if this diagonal has length square root of two, then the other diagonal does as well. With this information, how can we find the side length of the square? That's what we'll go through in today's lesson. Now, of course, finding the side length of a square is made easier by the fact that every side of a square has the same length. So we'll just call that length s. We know that the diagonal of this square is root two, and which, by the way, that's about 1.41. And with that information, we want to find the lengths of the sides. How can we do it? Well, we'll need to find an equation relating the diagonal to the side length. Then we'll just solve for s, the side length. Well, what I notice is that here, with these two sides and the diagonal, we've got a right triangle, since the angles of a square are all 90 degrees. Now, if I've got a right triangle, certainly I can use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs must equal the square of the hypotenuse, the longest side, which is our diagonal in this case. So let's write that equation using the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the squares of the legs, s squared plus s squared, s squared plus s squared must equal the square of the hypotenuse. So that's square root of two squared. Again, that's because this is a right triangle. Now we've just got to solve this equation for s. s squared plus s squared, that's two s squared. So we have that two s squared equals the square root of two squared. What's that? By definition, square root of two squared is just two. The square root and the square undo each other. So this is equal to two. Now to continue getting s by itself, let's divide both sides of this equation by two. Then I have that s squared is equal to one. Now to finish this off, let's take the square root of both sides. So s on the left is equal to the square root of one, which is one. So the side length of this square with diagonal root two is one. I'll point out, since s squared is one, s could also be negative one, but when we're talking about geometry, we're not usually interested in negative lengths. We're really only interested in positive lengths. Those make sense. So we're only interested in this positive answer. If the diagonal of a square is root two, then its sides must all have length one. So to finish this off, we could erase those S's and put ones there. Pretty nice. So that's an example of how to find the side length of a square from the diagonal. But what would the general formula be? So that any diagonal we have, we could plug it into this formula and get the side length. Well, the side length equals, what did we have to do to the diagonal to get the side length? First, we had to square the diagonal, so diagonal squared, but then we also had to divide it by two and then to finish things off, we had to take a square root. So in general, the side length of a square with diagonal d is the square root of d squared divided by two. Now we could rewrite that as the square root of d squared divided by the square root of two. And the square root of d squared is just d. So that's equal to d over the square root of two. And then it's generally considered better form to not have square roots in the denominator. This is called rationalizing the denominator. In order to get rid of that square root of two, we'll just multiply by root two over root two. That's the same as multiplying by one, so it doesn't change the value of the expression, but it's gonna move the square root 
to the numerator instead of having it in the denominator. So what we'll have is d times the square root of two. So d root two in the denominator, root two times root two is just two. And this could be our final formula. If a square has diagonal length d, then its side lengths are d times root two divided by two. Pretty nice. But really, the process is so simple that I don't think you have to worry about memorizing this formula. Let's do one more quick example. So here I've got another square. Let's say its diagonal length is five. And again, I'm trying to figure out the side length of the square. I could just plug five into this formula. But again, the process here is so simple that I'm not really gonna worry about the formula. I just have to remember that this is a right triangle and apply the Pythagorean theorem. I know that s squared plus s squared must equal the hypotenuse squared. That's our diagonal squared in this case. And then I know I've got two copies of s squared here. So 2s squared is 5 squared, and I know 5 squared is 25. Then I would just divide both sides by 2, and so I have that s squared is 25 divided by 2. And then to finish solving for the side length, I'll just take the square root of both sides. And so we have that s is equal to the square root of 25 divided by 2 which we could simplify a little bit. This is the same as the square root of 25 divided by the square root of two. And the square root of 25 is five. So this is five divided by the square root of two. And then if I multiply by root two over two to rationalize the denominator, my final answer will be five root two over two. Now, of course, you could plug that into a calculator if you wanted a decimal approximation. I like exact answers, though, so that's how I'm going to leave it. If a square has diagonal length 5, its side lengths are 5 root 2 over 2. If a square has diagonal length d, its side lengths are d root 2 over 2. Hope that helps.